Hi, my name is Dr. Peter Kay, and this is the next lecture in the heat transfer power and environment module. And this lecture is all about compressible fluid flow. So what you should be able to do by the end of this lecture is um, you should be able to discuss the um, concept of stagnation temperature and also use that in um, calculations. Um, describe the operation and relevance of a Delaval nozzle. Calculate the mass flow rate through a choke nozzle and in particular um, the maximum mass flow rate that you can get through a nozzle. And also understand the importance of the critical um, pressure on choke flow. Okay, so firstly we're just going to talk about sonic velocity. Now, if you can imagine um, a fluid and at some point in that fluid you kind of increase the pressure slightly. And as you do that, the adjacent molecules undergo a small change in position and you get this wave that obviously moves um, through, th through the fluid. Now, if the fluid is incompressible, as you've probably assumed that all um, liquids are up to now, then the motion is infinitely quick because if it's incompressible, as soon as you move one, the one next to it moves and so on and so on and so on. But most fluids are, and especially gases, and even fluid um, liquids as well, to some degree compressible therefore the time is finite it's not infinite so you will have this um, wave that kind of moves uh, through the fluid and that's got, got a finite um, velocity and in problems where you've got a sudden change or if the move it, or if the fluid is moving quickly then this time becomes important um, if it's obviously um, static then it's not such of an issue but um, it can become more of a problem as time becomes more important, as I say, when the fluid is moving uh, more quickly. So that's what the sonic velocity is. Sonic velocity is the, type, is the velocity, the maximum velocity that um, this wave can move uh, through the fluid. And for a thermally perfect gas, the relationship is given by this, um, where A is the sonic velocity, and that's equal to the square root of um, gamma for the um, fluid that you're interested in, R for the um, fluid that you're interested in, and the temperature, um, which is always in absolute temperature, so it's in Kelvin. So that's what it's um, given as. I haven't derived this here. Um, you can derive this, um, and if you're interested, go and um, pick up a fluids book, such as um, Massey Mechanics of Fluids. It'll give you quite a good um, derivation of where that comes from. But as I say, I'm not going to do it here. Now, we can express the velocity of gas as a function of the sonic velocity. So if u is the um, velocity in our gas, then um, if we divide that by a, which is, um, so u is the velocity in our gas, if we divide that by a, which is our sonic velocity, we get um, this non-dimensionless number m, which is the Mach number, which you've probably heard of. Um, so you can see from this that um, if m is less than 1, if the Mach number is less than 1, then the um, velocity of the gas is subsonic, so it's below the sonic velocity. When it's equal to 1, then the um, the gas is moving at a, the sonic velocity, and if it's greater than 1, then it's supersonic. Uh, 